Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. We are here in the new season, the 2023-2024 season, season two of our career mode with Batter CFC, my creative club career mode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Make sure to leave comments as we go here. We got a very exciting campaign coming up. We have four free transfers coming in that we signed last season. We got a lot of good young players that we want to see how they develop in the academy and see how they do on loan. And we got some backups that are going to be absolutely tremendous this year. The depth that should carry us for a promotion. Now let's get right into the summer window. By now, these should all be household names. These are the free transfers that we brought in last season on pre-contract agreements but I have to sim a day before they go through, so we'll go over them one more time. Scott Carson, Duncan Watmore, Joshua Emanuel, and Harry Beautyman all coming in this season on free transfers. Now, our top priority this summer transfer window is a center back, Corey Daba. I will say it now, we're gonna go get him, but our first transaction this summer window is gonna be bringing in Darko Giabi on loan. We're gonna try to get him on loan because he doesn't wanna relocate on a permanent deal, but we can loan him in. That's a nice split of wages right there, 40% wages for us for the next two years on loan. Now for a transfer fee, he's valued at 1.2 million, so I'm just gonna offer that, and then I'm gonna add a 5% sell-on clause. And Jesse Marsh says, yes, sir, we will take that deal. Darko Giabi, the six foot five midfielders coming to Battersea on loan, and we will pro most likely buy him for 1.2 million in two years. And then I just want to address the free agents that we found this season. Bobby Townsend gonna be our backup left back to Ali Koike. He looks pretty solid overall, physicals, pace, defensively he looks really good. And then the Tickle Monster, Sam Tickle. I couldn't say no to a guy with this name. I don't really care what his overall is, but he's 21. Looks like he has mediocre potential, but that is simply not the point. He is our third string goalkeeper. I might even just send him out on loan so we can maybe get that loan glitch that upgrades players' overalls and potentials. Sam Tickle, the Tickle Monster. Breed, agent. Love that. People are being tickled. So in comes Bobby Townsend, a 62 overall. That's fantastic. Only thing I'm worried about is him getting complacent about his squad role being important and him getting not enough playing time. So we'll see how that transpires. Try to get him enough playing time as a backup to Ellie Koike. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Tickle Monster. Also, just to point out, we have a new youth scout, Craig Doherty from Northern Ireland, he's going to scout Wales for goalkeepers. He's a better scout than we have so far, so hopefully we find that really high potential goalkeeper that we can bring in, that we've been looking for. Nikita Markov's going to Scotland for three months, and Cletus Kantos is going to Northern Ireland for three months. Look at the busyness we have created here. Harry Hicks has departed. Peter Jovanovic is leaving on loan. In comes Harry Beautyman, Joshua Emanuel, Duncan Wantmore, Scott Carson, and Bradley Fowler has left. A lot going on early in this transfer window. We love that. Sam Tickle going out on loan. We're loan listing him. Bobby Townsend is a 62 overall. It's a really good backup for Ali Koike. He's 18 years old. See if we can get his potential up and fulfill his important role that he wants to have. Joshua Emanuel is going to wear the number two. I like that. Harry Beautyman is wearing the number 26. I don't know if I quite like that. I think I'm going to give him the 16. And Duncan Watmore will not be wearing the number 22. He will be our number nine, that coveted number in soccer. That big striker we've got. Or not so big. He's 5'9", but big time player. And also Scott Carson in his first year with Batters, he said, I'm retiring at the end of the season, so it's a good thing we brought in Sam Tickle. And you know what, Scott Carson, good for you. Let's make this a hell of a swan song and get that promotion. Now I've decided we're also gonna bring up Richard Campbell to send out on loan. Also, same thing with Thomas O'Connor, we are gonna bring him up and send him out on loan if possible. You see it here in our inbox, Darko Giabi has agreed to a two year loan to batter CFC from Leeds and we will have that buy option. He looks like an immense player. Let's take a look at him here. Look at this man, he is six foot five. Got pretty solid pace for a man at that height. Great strength. 
and just overall solid stats that shot power is blistering i hope we can get some rips off with him in the midfield next player we're going to bring in is our number one transfer priority for this summer transfer window bringing in a center back we're going to bring in Corey and daba six foot two pretty pacey very strong very good defender honestly at 23 he's got a lot of room to grow and we hope he can do that here at battersea that's not bad at all we're gonna accept that bango fatty getting another player undervalue the master negotiator bango bringing in Corey and daba love it and a great chance to take a look at those beautiful new batter cfc kits that we will be rocking this season and then the last player we're bringing in this window five foot five sunny hilton attacking midfielder from fulham looks like a real shifty good young player to back up charlie webster Oh, that's a good contract, Sonny. Welcome to the club, Sonny Hilton. Bango working some more and more magic here. Aw, oh, look at that big Darko walk through those doors. Two-year loan. I can tell you that contract's gonna end up being a lot longer than two years for that man. He's huge! Look at this team Bango Fatty has constructed along with our lovely owner, Duncan Watmore, Awushia Adu up front, Charlie Webster. This midfield is phenomenal. Teddy Carpenter was kind of our player of the season last year, did everything for us. Our wingbacks are excellent now. Look at Joshua Emanuel, he's tremendous. Corey Ndaba is a great addition in our defense. Hugo Noble and Priestley Farquharson are only going to have more and more chemistry together. Excellent goalkeeper, really good young player, 19 years old on loan. High, high work rate, six foot five, and then we have the five foot five, Sonny Hilton, with good pace, agility, backup attacking midfielder. That's a backup center back right there, and Billy Wright coming off the bench, Harry Beautyman, just a do it all backup player as well. Emil Oliver, our super sub striker off the bench. Jack McGuire, our backup winger, wing back off the bench. The ageless wonder, Scott Carson. Bobby Townsend is going to start in the reserves. He's 18. He hasn't played a game for us yet. We haven't seen what he can do, and we have seen what Jack McGuire can do. Jordan Berry's a good backup option. Jay Lambert. Sean Donovan's going to be a part of the reserves. We're going to see if that young lad from Ireland can really show off his potential that he has. Right now, I think he's in the upper 80s. The Tickle Monster. Sam Tickle, our third string goalkeeper. Just, that's amazing. Felix Lyons, Tommy Graham, some Tucker guy that I don't know. And then we got... For some reason, Matthew Hurst is still here. I said he was going to retire. He's 36 years old, a 5'9 center back. He's one of the worst players I've ever seen. And then we've got Richard Campbell going out on loan. Tommy O'Connor going out on loan. Eunice Balut going out on loan. And Malcolm Mitchell is going to get sold at some point. This is the state of Battersea Football Club right now. And this is the state of a team that I believe can get promoted this season. And we are sending out Sam Tickle on loan to Stockport for two years. There's no buy option for them, so see you in two years, Sam. Hopefully your overall and potential goes up through some kind of glitch. All right, we've made it through the first month and we're about to be ready for our first game, but let's look at a recap of our transfer window, one that was highly anticipated. We brought in Bobby Townsend on a free transfer as a free agent. Richard Campbell, one of our youth academy players, is going out on loan. Charles Tucker's out on loan. Eunice Balut's going to Crew Alexandra on loan. Tommy O'Connor's going out to Ibiza on loan. All for two years. Sam Tickle going out on loan. Stockport. Darko Giabi coming in on loan from Leeds United for two years. We do have a buy option with him. Malcolm Mitchell sold to St. Pat's. Corey and Daba bought from Ipswich Town. And Sonny Hillen bought from Fulham. I gotta say, buying this many players at once and loaning out this many players at once kind of feels like Chelsea. <laughs> Now, as I did last time, let's take a look at the window so far around the world. Rafael Leao going to Villarreal, going to Spain. I like that move for him. Maybe Villarreal can start to push for a, a Champions League spot and make some noise out there. Bruno Fernandez or Bruno Fernandes going to Bayern Munich. 
more Napoli. Just like last transfer window, they just kept buying players and selling players. They were very active. They get Mateus Cunha. That's a great deal for them. Oh, and boy, do I wish Liverpool would do something like this in real life. A midfielder. Goodness, that makes me happy to see. You Arsenal fans won't like this one. Martinelli's going to Leverkusen? Yeah, because that makes sense. And Gundogan's going to Roma. That, that one actually does make sense. Wow, Aston Villa have absolutely cleaned house in this transfer market. Let's take a look at this. Ollie Watkins is leaving, he's going to Celta Vigo. Jacob Ramsey is leaving, he's going to Hertha Berlin, along with Alexis McAllister, because that makes sense. Emmy Martinez, the beloved goalkeeper that Villa have now, going to RB Leipzig. Leon Bailey going to Barca. And all they're bringing in with all this money is Evan Ndicka. Wow, Aston Villa. Wow. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. At long last, we have our keeper of the future. A youth player finally brought in from Wales who is incredible. 70 to 94 potential, 53 overall, 16 years old. Reese Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Love the look of him. He's got a kick-ass beard for a generated player. I mean, he looks like he's... 26 not 16 i mean ah uh, this is what i needed we don't need to scout goalkeepers for the rest of this report in wales but we will but we've got our man hopefully he is the keeper that will be starting for us for a long time not now but down the road so one thing i haven't really done in this career mode is look at the objectives because i figured if you win at all costs that's the most important thing but for some reason, the financial objectives have gone up to the most critical value ever. And we're actually doing pretty well so far on the popularity rating, but I don't think we're going to meet this because we need to sign one crucial player and make a 5 million euro profit. I, I, I'm looking at these objectives and the only thing I can think of is the only way we save Bango Fatty's job and avoid not meeting either of these critical financial objectives is we need to get promoted. We need to make it so impossible for them to fire us by just winning the league or getting promotion in whatever way possible. So that is the only objective that matters to me now because we've already met one of our youth development objectives and we're probably going to meet the other brand exposure. We need to get three clean sheets and away matches. I think we can do that. It's promotion or busts for Battersea this season, it seems, to save Bango Fatty's job. And to be honest, looking at this squad, there is one weakness that I still see. It is center back. We don't have one elite center back compared to the elite overall positions we have elsewhere around the pitch. So I could see us meeting an objective by literally just bringing in a 30, 32 year old, you know, some kind of older center back who can be a quote unquote crucial player for us, a higher overall than one of these three in January to meet that objective and to help us, you know, really shore up that defense in the second half. Let's see how this season goes, though. All right, so we have had a lot to cover this episode so far between transfers and youth academy stuff and around the world transfers and whatever. So we've gotten through all of it. We've gotten through that first month and we're at the beginning of the 2023 season, but we're just going to play this one game at Newport County in Wales and the next episode we're really gonna move and sim a lot and get through some months after that but for now let's just get into this game against Newport County so before we get into any games I want to shout out the Battersea FC Google Sheet this is the lifeblood and history of this career mode series any past achievements where we were in the table all of our points current date in the save the trophy case player records, all the stat leaders throughout this career mode, everything is in here. It will be accessible through my Twitter, it is my top pinned tweet, and it will be that way until the end of the career mode. In every video in this series on YouTube, it will be at the bottom of every single description if you want to take a look at it. The Google Sheet is comment only for you guys, so not only can you view it, but you can actually leave comments too if you want to. Just please go check this out. It is so cool. So before we get into this match, I wanted to go over the inspiration for these new kits that we so lovingly displayed in that video to kick off this video. The away kits are designed after LSU football, the purple and gold, not exactly like the LSU football uniforms. That's nearly impossible, but the color scheme, because that is my favorite college football team almost because of their colors, it's just, they just look so good. That's the cleanest college football uniform there is. 
The alternate jerseys, the third kits, are designed in the color scheme of my alma mater, Endicott College. So, shout out, Endicott. Go Gulls, baby. That's why we're wearing the blue and green as an alternate this year. And then the home kits are just super clean and fresh this year. A little purple trim on the stripes and a, a black back with the purple numbers and names. Looks really, really solid. So, we're going to get a chance to see those at home eventually. But it is the LSU purple and gold in this first game against Newport County. Now it's time for us to do one thing, and that is perform, ladies and gentlemen, on the pitch. Show them how it's done here in Wales against Newport County to open up the second season of this career mode. Let's go, Battersea. Come on, lads. There's nothing quite like the excitement of opening day, the first game of the season. We get a chance to look at all these new faces, all these high-prized free agents that we've brought in. I am so excited for this season, and I do definitely think that we have the expectations of promotion this season. Whether we win the league, finish second, win the promotion in the playoff, whatever it is, I want to go up. Oh, Charlie Webster has Duncan Watmore here. Ooh, good early chance there from the Ginger Ninja. I feel like we need a new nickname for Duncan Watmore. I feel like Ginger Ninja's been used by someone somewhere. Maybe a lot, maybe not a lot, but there's got to be something else we can call Duncan Watmore. Great pressure here. Teddy Carpenter just gives it away. Oh, nicely done. Charlie Webster getting in there defensively. Marcus McGuane has a whooshy I do. Is he in here? Unbelievable. Last year's top goal scorer in the league picks up right where he left off. A whooshy. A do. Goal. Marcus McWayne with great patience here to allow a whooshy to find some space to make that run. An excellent finish from our number 10. Ah, shiver me timbers, a whooshy. Come on, lads. Whoop. Teddy Carpenter. Making men fall over. A whooshy do just too big of a touch. Oh my god, Teddy Carpenter is everywhere right now. And a whooshy do is bringing men down with him. Teddy Carpenter intercepting. Duncan Watmore. Joshua Emanuel, look at that pace down the wing. Emanuel looking for a whooshy. We're all over him right now. Webster. Looking for Marcus McGuane. Oh, it's a lot closer than I expected. A great shot there from the former Arsenal man. Look at the strength from Joshua Emanuel. He's been so great at right back already in this first half. Duncan Watmore looking for a whooshy do on his second goal. He goes for the header off the bounce. Interesting move there, but Battersea, the 69ers lead 1-0 at halftime. This might work out! Good pressure, Duncan! Oh, I freaking love the hustle there, Duncan Watmore. Oh, yes, Corey and Daba. Great read there. Good interception. Duncan Watmore gallivanting forward. Kind of by himself. Charlie Webster. Ali Koike gets it wide. Ali Koike. Looking to play it in. Charlie Webster's there. Marcus McGuane. Duncan Watmore shot is blocked. Oh, Teddy Carpenter has been tremendous. Another Teddy Carpenter tackle. He has been everywhere in the midfield. Yes, great tackle, Corey and Daba. Excellent timing. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, really? You've got to be kidding me here. He's trying to clear it with Joshua Emanuel right there. He takes it on his right foot to clear it instead of just clearing it with his left, allowing the defender to pick it off of him. And how does he score from that angle, Bailey? That was terrible! Teddy Carpenter again! Everywhere. We need a win this game. We have played so much better than Newport. 
Oh, God. Great timing on that pass here. No way is he in. Goodness, great save, Bailey Peacock Farrell. I am a peacock! You gotta let me fly! Oh, how does that get through? Somebody's gotta wake up defensively. Emmanuel again. Get this one clear, goodness. Duncan Watmore lets that one run. He has the pace to get around his defender here. Watmore. Looking for Teddy Carpenter at the back post! Unbelievable! In the 85th minute, the man who has owned and bossed this game has got the winner right now for the 69ers. Bailey Peacock Farrell runs around like an idiot. Look at the traveling supporters going nuts. Duncan Watmore plays a perfect pinpoint cross to our number eight. Have at it, lads. Scenes here in Wales. Boom shakalaka. Whew, we let the heart rate go down a little bit after that one. We'll bring in some reinforcements. We'll take off our man of the match. You know what? We'll take off Marcus McGuane. Put some height in that midfield. And then we'll, uh... And then we'll bring in Sonny Hilton. See how he does as an attacking midfielder. We'll just bring in three subs late in this game and see if we can hang on to this awesome first win if we can get it. Look how big Darko is. My goodness. Towering over every player on the pitch. And little Sonny. Sonny Hilton has it here. Looking for Teddy Carpenter. Can't really get it to him, but the clock should run out. In Wales here, first game of the season in Battersea with an excellent late winner. Some drama here to start off the season. We love that. But that is going to do it for us here. Teddy Carpenter is your man of the match for me and for, for probably everybody here watching. He was unbelievable. I appreciate all of you that watch, all of you supporters of Battersea FC here and the channel. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Therios. Hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share this video around, and you'll never walk alone.